Hey guys, what I would like to do in this video is talk about two different CPUs. The first one is the Snapdragon 865, which is what we'll see in Android flagship phones next year. And the second is the i9 10900K and the 10th generation Intel desktop CPUs. So if I jump over to my browser, we can see the headline. So the headline here kind of says it all. The Snapdragon 865 will make phones worse in 2020 thanks to mandatory 5G. And it says here in the image, it's going to make a lot of, use a lot of power. We made the 4G worse too. So this basically talks, this, this is a quite a, lo a long article. I'll leave a link to it so you can check out in full. But this diagram, diagram kind of sums it up. Over the last few years, all the modems have been on one chip. So you can see the Snapdragon 855 here, the 4G modem is in the chip. So it saves space, it saves energy. But what they're going to do for 5G is have a separate chip. So there's no modem in the actual CPU. There'll be a separate modem for 4G and 5G. Now, they talk about it in this article that there have been phones in the past where they've done this before, where they've had a separate modem for 4G or whatever, 3G, etc. And what happens is that battery life takes a, a hit and, well, there's been other problems that, that have arisen as well. What it sounds like here is that th this extra chip is going to require more resources. It will require more power. It's a separate chip. It does require to be powered as well. But also, if you think about it from the chipset point of view, from the, the size of the phone, they will need space to put that additional chip, which means that there's less space for the battery, which means that in addition to powering two chips instead of one, you're going to have a smaller battery. So I don't know how they're going to get around this. Either we're going to see reduced battery life in 2020, you know, in exchange for 5G, which isn't really even being pushed out that well as yet. Um, or we're going to see phones getting bigger, even bigger. I don't know if they'll do that. I don't think we can get phones any bigger unless they start making jeans pockets bigger. But yeah, it, it sounds like we're going to take a hit. So the flagship phones, and by that, I mean the most expensive phone from each company, from Samsung, from Google, from whoever, if they're going to use the Snapdragon 865, they're going to have two chips instead of one. And you know, the reason being for 5G, but they're saying that 4G performance could be, you know, hurt because of this as well. I'm not sure why, but um, I don't know. I mean, obviously this chip is going to be more powerful. It is going to be more powerful and, you know, your phone will be snappier, but the network and the, the speed of your network and the speed of your, your, your connections when you're out and about, that is very important. And, you know, it talks a lot about this in the article. I'll, I'll let you read it yourself, but they talk about this how in the past uh, where companies like AT&T, they just started calling their 4G network 5G. And we're going to see this again. We're going to see a lot of carriers just mislead the public and say that phones are 5G when they're not, or say that their network is 5G when it's not. And it's one of those things, you know, I, I think this is all part of the push for adoption of 5G and it's trying to get everyone, you know, the retailers, the, the, the phone companies, the carriers, you want to get them all on board to push forward 5G. And maybe 2020 is the, is the year that we have to take a hit in order to get improved speeds in 2021, et cetera. So I don't know, I'll leave a link to the article, check it out, let me know what you think. But um, it will, the 865 will of, of course be more powerful, but it sounds like battery life could be an issue. So we'll see what companies do and how, you know, maybe some companies, you know, we'll work around that. We'll see what OnePlus, et cetera, do. And, you know, maybe maybe companies will work around it somehow and maybe it won't be an issue. Maybe they can put a larger battery in. I don't know. So the next thing I want to talk about is the i9-10900K. This is from Guru3D, but you'll see this news everywhere. Now, this is about the whole 10th generation. What's the name of it again? Uh, Comet Lake S. I forgot the name of it there. Uh, so this is about the 10th generation chips. Now, this is relevant to me because I have been thinking about buying a new CPU. I have been thinking about upgrading my PC. Now, when you're upgrading your PC, there's a few different routes you can go down, but I was hoping to just take out my CPU, put in the new CPU and sell my old one. At the moment, I've got the 8700K. Now, my option right now, as of today, is if I want the most powerful CPU for my chipset is to buy the 9900K. It is an upgrade, but I was hoping for my next upgrade to be a little bit more significant, hence the 10900K. Now, this looks quite good. It ticks a lot of boxes for me in that 
I, you know, it's 10 cores, 20 threads, and, you know, 20 meg of, 20 megabytes of L3 cache and all that. It's going to be a good performer. I'm sure it will be. But the thing that really annoys me is that no, they're not going to use the same socket. The motherboard that I've got uses LG1151. They're going to use LGA1200. In other words, if you have got an 8700K, a 9700K, a 9900K, 8500K, anything from the 8th and 9th generation, if you want to buy a 10th, 10th gen CPU, you will need a new motherboard. Now, Intel have done this a lot. Um, you know, they did it between the 7700K to the 8700K, they did that as well. But it is a little bit frustrating that, you know, my friend Mark was talking about this and he was saying that there's been people who have proved that over the last four or five years, they could have, if they wanted to, just have kept the same CPUs with the same motherboards, but they've been changing the socket type, you know, every two years over the last few years. So it's a little bit frustrating. And the reason this is frustrating for me is because, well, motherboards cost more money. The motherboard that I've got costs like 250 pounds. So not only do I have to buy a new CPU, I would have to buy a new motherboard as well. If you scroll down here, you can see some of the other CPUs that are there. The successor to the 8700K and 8700K, 10700K, eight threads, 16, uh, eight cores, sorry, 16 threads. There's a lot of other ones as well, though. Even like the i5 now, you know, six cores, 12 threads. It, it, it's pretty good that the lower end is quite good. Even the i3 is quad core now. So, I mean, it's pretty good where uh, all these CPUs are, but it, it's frustrating for existing Intel users that you can't just use the same motherboard. There, there are some good things here though, um, up to 40 lanes uh, of PCI Express, uh, Wi-Fi 6, integrated USB 3.2 Gen 1, so 10 gigabits per second. That's twice as fast as USB 3.0. So that's pretty good. Um, so there's a lot to, to like there. I'll, I'll leave a link to this again and you can check it out. You know, obviously this is an improvement over the ninth generation as far as performance goes and all that. Um, time will tell what what these uh, what this new CPU will cost and what this range of new CPUs will cost. I've been looking at a lot of people talking about this on Reddit and a few other places and the thing is that AMD are still the best bang for buck right now and AMD have come out really aggressively with a lot of these really you know high performing chips at a really good price. So Intel are kind of in a, a strange situation where they kind of have to drop the price but how much are they going to drop the price? I don't know. Ideally, I would have liked to have just bought the 10 900K, sold my 8700K, just plopped it into my PC and I would have went from six cores and 12 threads to 10 cores and 20 threads. But I can't do that. I need to, you know, if I want to do that now, my options are to simply buy a 9900K or buy a new CPU and a new motherboard. And if you are looking to build a new PC or like me, upgrade your existing one because, you know, I've got enough RAM, I've got a GPU, etc. Like I'd be looking at this, you know, and, and thinking, well, if I need to replace my motherboard as well, why not jump over to AMD? And that's kind of the way that I'm looking at this right now. Now, time will tell what price this comes out at, you know, a uh, 14 nanometer uh, chipset and all that. Sorry, I just, I just caught my eye. I should have mentioned that earlier on, um, that this is still 14 nanometer. I should have pointed that out earlier. Um, but time will tell what this will be like. But at this point, I'm thinking that, you know, six months down the line, four or five months down the line, whatever. If I am going to be buying a new motherboard and CPU anyway, I might be jumping back to the AMD world. It seems like it's still the best bang for your buck. We'll see what happens, um, but it's, it, it's a little bit frustrating that it's a new motherboard. The reason, you know, it kind of annoys me as well, when I bought the 8700K, everyone who had the 7700K was really annoyed that it was a new motherboard. And I was like, yep, it, it's a lot of crap. It, it, it shouldn't be like this. But I was like, right, I've got the 8700K. This should hopefully get me a, a good couple of years, but I just got the eighth gen and ninth gen. So yes, Intel are being Intel. Let me know what you think about both of these stories in, in the comment area, guys, uh, about the Snapdragon 865 and about the i9-10900K and the new, what are they calling it? The new Z490, the new Z490, they're calling it chipset. That's what they're calling this chipset with the LGA1200 socket. So leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.